Hello everybody, it's Nicolas Dorlier. I will present to you what is PayJoin and how to use it in BTC Pay Server. So I want to start by some theory about this, uh, what problem where PayJoin is aimed to solve. So I'm I basically I'm representing a transaction uh, with this diagram. So a transaction is basically taking what we call some inputs and spending in and it's giving an input. Every uh, round circle, it's uh, what we call a UTXO. So basically a transaction is spending some UTXO as input and is creating new UTXO as output. So you can see that basically like a coin if you want. Uh, so what is happening is that if Bitcoin was perfectly fungible, like there will be no inform you could not attach any information to to those UTXO but like analysis company are uh, attaching some information to those uh, to those UTXO for example to who they think they belong to uh, so in this example I will represent a, a transaction like this so this is what we call tainting so when when an uh, analysis company decide that uh, some UTXO belong to, for example, pink, here I will call her Alice. So if Alice is making is creating a transaction, sending some money to Bob, uh, basically Chenalysis company will uh, guess what is the uh, output that represents the payment and what is the output that represents the change back uh, to Alice. So they, 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 they cannot know that very with perfect uh, accuracy. So they are basing themselves on, on what we call uh, heuristic. So one of the heuristic they think is that if they have tainted one of the inputs, they assume that all the input in this transaction belongs to the same person. So that, that's a common, common input heuristic we call that. But in a normal transaction, they don't. Uh, in a normal, in a what we call a coin join transaction, where where several people are building together a transaction, uh, they cannot apply this heuristic, and this is basically what they see. They see that there is one transaction with uh, UTXOs coming from several different people, and in outputs, uh, so they can identify with perfect accuracy what is the uh, output uh, what, uh, what, what, to which some output belongs to, it's called the change outputs. But there is some, some uh, outputs that uh, they cannot be for sure to who they belong to. So uh, the, for here, the output that have multiple color, it represents the outputs where there is a doubt on, on what they think it belongs to. So now imagine two transactions, so a coin joint transaction and a withdrawal from some exchange. So one thing that you need to know is that exchanges are sharing uh, their data about uh, their customers. So analysis company in some in one way or another can identify precisely uh, when uh, that some output belongs to you when you withdraw from some exchanges. So in this example, uh, the, I put a coin join and the last input in the coin join, as you can see, is white. So it represents uncertainty. So imagine that the uh, analysis company don't have any information on this, uh, on this in, uh, UTXO. So they don't know to who it belongs. However, they know that uh, you withdraw from an exchange. Imagine, Im imagine that you're yellow. They know that you withdraw from the exchange. Uh, belongs to you. So they, they, they identify one of your output as belonging to yellow, that's you. And what is happening is that if by mistake, uh, when you are sending a transaction from your wallet, you are mixing one, uh, the, the change that a change that you got from your coin join with uh, one of the output that you got from your exchange, uh, automatically, the uh, the analysis company will think will will uh, assume that 
the last the last UTX uh, input of your coin join was belonging to you. So basically, with what you do with your action in the future, they can infer what you did in the past uh, if you are not careful about what you're doing. So that's what I call being pawned by the common input heuristic. Except if you are were using pay join. So if you were using pay join, the nice thing about pay join is that Analysis company can't know that you're using pay join. So if you are using a pay join and uh, you can see that uh, this is a reality, basically you're, uh, with pay join, you create a transaction that is actually a coin join, but it looks like a normal transaction on the network. So they will think that the last input of the coin join belongs to you when in reality it's belonging to purple. So it's basically what I call poisoning uh, the, the analysis. And uh, so Pageant is really about this. It's about preserving the privacy of everyone. And I'm saying everyone because even people not using Pageant benefit from it. And uh, it does so by poisoning taint analysis. So it, it increases the doubt of the legitimacy of any analysis. Because as you can see, if the, the, um, if the analysis is tainted, everything that they will infer after your careless marriage will be also poisoned. So like, even if a small percentage of people are using page on, basically it spoil uh, the whole wheel. So now I will just show you a small demo for which works uh, in BTC Pay. So there's lots of different wallet that is trying to support it. There is like, a, there is a there is blue wallet, Wasabi wallet, uh, join uh, join market wallet. Uh, there is a implementation in, in JavaScript as well that exists. Uh, for but for now only like a BTC Pay server sent, uh, created it in release. Uh, so let's see a small demo about how it works. So there is one thing that you need uh, to think about when uh, you want to use page on as a merchant. So imagine the merchant is Bob um, and you want to activate page on, you need to go to stores in your store settings. And you need two things. First, you need to check this button here. So you check it, you click save. Then second thing that you need to do is uh, to have a hot wallet because page on required to sign during the during the protocol. So you go to uh, so in your derivation scheme when you set it up, you need to select import from new seed. So you if it's new seed, you can leave everything empty. But the important thing is to check this one is hot wallet. So by doing this, you're sure that uh, a hot wallet is used on the merchant and you can do these pay joints. Uh, that's all for the merch uh, for the merchants. I created basically two wallets, one for Alice, one for Bob. And uh, the, what we I want to showcase is uh, Alice sending money to the merchant Bob. So let's start by making Bob creating a new invoice. So let's say we'll want an invoice of one hundred dollars in BTC. Okay. So this invoice will appear here. So now Alice will try to pay this invoice. So as you can see, like here, Alice can pay this invoice. And what will happen? So imagine that I cannot showcase your uh, uh, QR code scanning, but imagine that you scan with your QR code then what will happen is when Alice want to pay it, so send money, I will try to pay this invoice. So just to show you uh, what, what, uh, what has been happening. So here, when you go on the invoice, if you, if you don't have a scanner, uh, um, if you cannot take a picture with a webcam, you can go to copy and here copy the payment link. 
And in BTC Pay server, like you can you can pay to this payment link by going to send in your wallet and copy pasting here. And it fill out everything for you. So let's just, uh, okay, I want to sign with the hot wallet. So it shows you the transaction that is being broadcast and you can see that you have the choice to broadcast with page on or to do a simple broadcast. So as you can see, if I, if I send this transaction like now that, uh, with, a, with a normal broadcast, there is one input. So I will say broadcast with pay join. And now it created, uh, so it's, the, the pay join is successful. And if we can check what's happening, the transaction that has been created has actually two inputs two inputs here. So one of them belongs to Alice, one of them belongs to Bob. But the important thing is that it doesn't, it looks like a normal transaction. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything strange. So in this specific example, there is unnecessary heuristic, uh, input heuristic, but like lots of wallets are routinely doing this kind of uh, unnecessary input heuristic time to time. So it doesn't mean anything. And uh, BTC Pay Server try to make sure to, to avoid this heuristic when it can. So if you see, if you go in the, in the wallet of Alice and in the wallet of Bob, you can see the following thing that Alice, you can see that the transaction is a pay join here. And you can see in Bob that it's a payment of an invoice uh, and uh, it's also a pay join. So if I, if I go to the invoice, you will see interesting things. So you will see this in on-chain payments for Bob in your invoice, you will see this. You will see that there is two transactions that attempt to pay you. There is this one transaction with this ID, but the number of confirmation is minus one. So why minus one? Just because it has ne this transaction has never been broadcasted. It's, it's a normal transaction that Alice was going to send, but didn't send. Instead, what has been sent is the page on transactions of 1B6D6. And this has been uh, broadcasted to the network and it's page on transaction. So you can see like in the events here, you can see like uh, sometimes if you have problem with the page join, you will see in the event what's what has happening. So for example, if, if uh, Bob doesn't have any input to collaborate, you will see what's happening here. Uh, that's basically all I wanted to showcase. So thanks for listening. Uh, thanks a lot to our sponsors. So as you can see, we received, we are supported by lots of different companies. Uh, it means a lot for us. Like there is lots of developer that's and, and people that are working full time on BTC per server to bring you this. Um, this, uh, th this webcast was uh, initially hosted by DigiLabs on our uh, big blue button server. Sadly, I could not do the live streaming demo. Uh, we hope doing that for the next one. And uh, well, take care and stay tuned. Bye.